welcome back everyone to another episode of collectible conversations i'm one of your co-hosts here with my other co-host on this side i'm never gonna get it right pokemon radar i'm squeaks how you doing today radar what up guys how you doing i'm doing fantastic i got my back crack today at the chiropractor so i feel pretty good uh yeah does that actually work like, uh i crack my own back so i get the relief but it's also not good for you to crack your own back. At least that's what they tell you, but they probably just want you coming in to... Uh... I was going to say, yeah, don't you think maybe that... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I know. Conflict of interest we, there. We can, we can dissect that on another <laughs> podcast, but I do think, yes, I think that... I'm sure there are things you could mess up on your own, like mm -hmm. cracking your neck. I think that one has got to be dangerous. That was the one but you like, told me to. Cracking your back, like, I can't... Yeah. I can't really imagine just, like, doing a random pop or something is, like, going to cripple you. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't yeah. go to school for any of this. We are not licensed... <laughs> chiropractors, chiropractors or doctors or financial advisors uh yeah so, we're not those either yeah uh well what are we going to talk about today so first off first off before we even touch into any of that guys you know what to do hit the subscribe button hit the bell hit the like button only the like button not the dislike button that one guy out there i know you're out there don't hit it hit I... the like button just do it just do it show us you can do it show us you know and uh and then leave a comment. Leave a comment below. You know what the like button's kind of like? What? Have you ever heard about the shopping cart thing? Yes. About how like shopping carts are like the the like limitless test of like being a like good Samaritan society. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. I brought this up to my ex girlfriend who uh is very political and this kind of like broke her brain a little bit. Um Yeah, okay. The first time I read that, I was like, holy cow, because I actually put the shopping carts back. Yeah, right? I'll even put other people's shopping carts back. So then I read that, and I was like, oh, okay, well, you know. Yeah. But but the like button is also kind of the same way. You really don't get anything out of doing it. It doesn't serve any purpose for you. You're never going to get, like, that individual satisfaction of, like, them, like, acknowledging that you hit the like button for them because they'll never know you hit it for them. But mm -hmm. you do it anyways because it, like helps that you know what i mean yeah it's kind of like the shopping it, cart it it's creates like order it shopping. creates a self uh governing system uh be your own boss hit the like button i'm i'm laughing now because people are gonna think we staged this whole example just to get a like <laughs> but really i just thought of it as we yeah i almost I had, had to cut you off cart thing again this morning but yeah <laughs> anyways hit the freaking like button people okay so <laughs> now today <laughs> today Let's start with the news. So, again, since our last podcast, there has not been too much exciting. Um, we did get two new cards that got leaked, but we don't know what they do. It was a very small screenshot from a magazine, but it is a Karina and a Bruno, two trainer cards. I do believe this may be the first time we've ever seen a Bruno card in the in English TCG. And I guess, well, it will be in English. It's in Japanese. I don't think we've ever had it in either. Versus, um, versus series, you had the Bruno pokemon cards oh good point i didn't even think of those so so once it comes to english it may be our first example of an english mm -hmm. bruno right because there wasn't an english to be bruno. honest i've never looked at the english vs set because i know it's almost impossible to obtain and i'm not gonna Obviously, go down that don't want to enjoy it yeah if you can't have it. exactly okay no yeah. anyways but yes so <laughs> those two cards are coming in addition the heritage auction bidding has been underway for a few days uh, i think it has couple weeks left maybe two weeks two, something like 15 that 15 days left. 16 days yeah yeah and uh some of the big hitters in that are the proto stoys um this is not one that has a magic back it, it is believed to be maybe a later copy like a promotional copy or display copy or something actually not a lot of data around it my favorite copy it's his favorite copy i actually like that one a lot too because it has the cosmos foil which i think is really interesting mm -hmm. um because that is a foil pattern that was actually then used in final production you know we've seen on like the machamps and things like that yep um but yes have you seen the bids on that no it is, it, last i it saw was at 8500 yes i think it broke into five digits today wow so i last i saw i don't quote me on this it's been a very long work day, but I'm pretty sure I saw it at like 11,000 or something earlier. So I wouldn't be surprised if it goes much higher than that. You know, they were the, a lot of the guys that had the other ones were claiming that they'd already had, you know, 40, $50,000 offers, whatever. We're asking like six digit offers. So I wouldn't be surprised to see it creep up some, but it will be interesting to see where that lands. Yeah. That's not the only interesting piece. However, in heritage, there's also a first edition base set box, which I believe is now our 
fourth one that we've there three on heritage and three then heritage, yeah. and then one yes and one then there's pri- also been there's been a couple the privately one... throughout you know yeah, privately yeah. publicly whatever you want to call it they're yeah. mostly there's all public at this point heritage. third heritage one this year within the next like last six months um mm-hmm. and that is also including there's a first edition 10 charizard on heritage as well so mm-hmm. big big little milestones we'll be looking at here hopefully and that one was at ninety thousand last i looked which mm-hmm. i mean it's still early on so bids will trickle in and you know day of there will be bids but i think that one was at 90 right now yeah which is actually not as far as the last one was the last one hit like 200k like very quickly yeah I, I didn't pay so. that close attention but um mm-hmm. all that matters is that last price so yeah that is true that is true and then as many people probably saw it yesterday so you guys will be seeing this on the 30th but on the 28th actually was pwcc the big block i think it was almost 24 25 pages of listings of pokemon cards that were listed up and auctioned off and this happened you know pretty much across the evening and that auction block ended there were some Pretty big cards that ended in there. Um, I think the one that a lot of people are talking about is the sixty thousand dollar Mew Orb. PSA uh, ten. Do you have any thoughts? On that? Well, yes, PSA ten. It also had the the case that went with mm, it. That's true. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I forgot about that. Well, I I Twitch stream all the PWCC auctions every month. You just did a recap uh, as well right. on on that. But uh, uh, yeah, we saw a very very strong nine five Beckett sell for twenty thousand. I think the month before mm-hmm. it did not have the case. Um, so I, I was shocked just like everyone else was that it went that high. Um, great card, but comparative to some other trophy cards, I guess, um, falls in a weird place for me. So let me ask you this. So when I did the recap video, um, you know, I filmed that this morning and kind of, I hadn't looked at any of the prices. I went to bed early last night. I'm, I'm getting old, but You know, I woke up this morning, I just turned the camera on, pulled it up, and I started talking about them, you know, as I saw them. And when I actually saw that, that one didn't surprise me that much. Not only hitting a 10, but with the case and everything like that. Um, It it didn't surprise me strictly because of the fact of what we're starting to see some of these trophy card prices realize. You know, we've seen, not not to deviate away too far on a tangent, but like we've seen Gold Star, Espeon, and Umbreon, you know, hitting close to that 20k mark at 20k now we're starting you know so you have to think play promo espion and umbreon are going to go you know much higher than that and you've got to think something like the mew orb would be an even higher tier than that and you know we've seen things like trophy kings busting into you know tens busting at 150k you know it's not trophy king tier but it's definitely really gained a lot of steam and notoriety over the last i would even say 12 months oh yeah you know i would say 12 months ago your average trophy card person probably did not really have that one on their radar they were still focused on you know master scroll key etc and now we've really started to see it gain traction i don't think its price point really seems that unreasonable kind of in the in the grand scale of things you know illustrators up to 900k if you even just think the the way everything's kind of scaled accordingly i don't know 60k to me made sense like when i was going through it so today because i you know i've been in discord chatting with a lot of people today which you know shameless plug go join our discord But today I've been in Discord chatting with people in voice chat a lot today, and they had kind of the same sentiment that you did, that it really did shock them, which shocked me that it it shocked them. Because when I went through it, you know, I'm not a trophy card aficionado. I usually turn to you for a lot of the trophy card stuff, and it didn't surprise me. I guess it just made sense. Maybe I'm just like, maybe I'm becoming a a bull market person, you know? I've always (laughs) been the bear of the market. Maybe Maybe I'm changing. So can you kind of give me your thoughts on maybe why it really um, shocked you compared to those others well yeah i mean there's just it's what do you know what the pop is on that since you just did a video on it you know yeah i don't either but, i do not i'm um, gonna be honest i'm not a huge fan of the pop report but that's yeah, but probably for another video yeah so. um no i mean for for sixty thousand dollars i mean you could i would rather throw out an offer at like a full art pika trophy or two of them or three of them whatever people are willing to sell those at um mm-hmm. You know, it's it's not like one of those is going to come along. A PSA 10 Mew Orb is going to come along every day. But um, there are, I think, other items with more prestige behind them that mm-hmm. are worth that So at, in today's market. So that's why it shocked yeah. me. 
Um, okay. Yeah. So pretty simple. And that wasn't the only big card we saw, right? And we've we've already like you know spent a bunch of time talking about the Muir, but um, the EV Black Star promo, the one that has the background with the red, yellow, and blue in a ten, came up. That one sold for seven thousand two hundred and thirty-one or something like that. No, seven I mean, seven. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was definitely up there. I was trying to remember if it went just to eight K, but I think it was in the sevens. And mm -hmm. you know. That one, I think a lot of people, that was actually the first thing I saw this morning that reminded me like, oh, PWCC was last night was I was on, you know, I pulled up my phone when I woke up, saw Instagram feed and somebody had put it on their story that, mm -hmm. you know, oh, an EV came up because we, we don't see those that often. Pop, you know, I think a lot of 10, people that sale blew them away. And I, that one didn't blow me away. Pop, pop 10. It's yeah. a very common card and the f and it's graded so much. So the fact that it has such a low pop it makes sense to me. I think yeah. it's a beautiful card. Great hollow pattern. Eevee, Black Star promo, very well known side set. Like yep. that. Yeah, that fitted. Or well, fit and it also, well. I just like that one because it has very unique art in the sense that Eevee, first of all, is not brown. He's more of like a reddish color. And second of all, pattern behind him are the three colors of the original Eevee Lucians. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, it's, it's just. It's very simple, but very unique, and well, I like that about it. Yeah, his tail's getting a little bigger. Kind of looks like he might be evolving into a Flareon. Into one of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you're right. Like, the pop, you know, again, not a huge fan of the pop report, but the pop is low. And for a card that old, that that is probably more a true testament to the card. And, I mean, it, it is a super expensive card. It's risen a little bit throughout, you know, this whole cycle, but what card hasn't. But, you know... In a 10, we just don't see them. Mm -hmm. You know, there's probably a lot of collectors that have been waiting to put that piece of the puzzle together in their collection and have just been kind of sitting on it for, yeah, you know, since the last one came up. And so now that they finally had an opportunity, you're going to have a lot of people going head to head to try to, you know, snag that one because who knows when the next one will come. Yeah. And, and I mean, the thing is, like, I know people with bricks of Black Star promos, not specifically that card, but they mm -hmm. are out there. You know, but people like Rusty TCA Gaming has sent in hundreds of those and probably has hundreds more. And his equivalents, you know, Charlie, SM Pratt, who, these original guys that, you know, bought that stuff, they probably have hundreds of these, and but they've sent mm -hmm. in hundreds of these to get graded. Yeah. And look at the pop report. So that's probably just like one item specifically that you can appreciate the pop report on, even though saying Agreed. you hate, hate the pop report. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, that's a, that was an interesting sale to see. Uh, we also saw mm -hmm. all the Steve Aoki signed, uh, slabs yes. from SGC. And... Um, they raised yeah, just over $28,000 for the Aoki mm -hmm. foundation for brain research and autism. So phenomenal. Absolutely. And incredible. if you're out there right now, feeling a little charitable, looking, you know, something you could throw some money at to do some good, maybe that's, you know, a good place to put it. Yeah. So. Or cause that you're, uh personally tied to whatever whatever the uh place is yeah. it's always nice to give so mm -hmm. yeah. exactly yeah. but but yeah it was really cool i didn't really pay a lot of attention to the grades in particular grading company any of that i mean i think a lot of the you know what's interesting about those cards is the signature but more the story behind it the event that it happened at you know mm -hmm. than doing something good for charity and kind of the you know i i look at kind of like that happening and I have to, you know, throw a shout out back to Leonhart. I think Leonhart specifically, when I see stuff like this happening, you know, when he jumped into YouTube, one of the things that he was very adamant about, not just with NAMI, but other charities is, is really pushing doing charitable things. And I think that has kind of caused a ripple wave in the community to where now a lot of people are doing those things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think this is just another great example of doing things for charity. But I mean, I've seen even, you know, not maybe not on, you know, not everyone's the biggest YouTuber, or the biggest DJ in the world or anything like that. But even on just like a smaller scale, you know, Twitch streamers doing it, TikTokers doing it, you know, people on Instagram doing things for charity. You know, I just saw um, you had just interviewed Danny Phantom and mm -hmm. they had just donated a little under, I think it was $2,000 to, to Toys for Tots money mm -hmm. that they had raised. Um, you know, of X percentage of their profits or whatever for the holiday season and things like that. And I think that's really cool to kind of see that that has kind of become like a thing, you know, yeah. in the community that 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 is spreading and and getting, you know, those cards that are very clearly stated for charity in something like the PWCC block 
then gets that much more exposure and that many more eyes on it. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people last night went to the Stevie Oakley Foundation website and looked up kind of what it's all about and everything like that. And so I, I think, you know, kind of incorporating that charitable exposure into the growth of the hobby as a whole so that that growth is not just a, we're all out here making bucks, <laughs> but also doing some good for other people yeah. that maybe don't have that opportunity. I think that's really cool. Yeah, I so did. That was exciting. I, I did a charity auction with the WhatNot app. I had PokeRev, CNG Emporium, Lootbox, and donate some stuff. And mm -hmm. I donated some of my stuff as well. And I think... I uh, watched that one. Didn't you guys give a PS5 away? Uh, yeah, we gave a PlayStation 5 away. Um, yeah, that was wild. From, from my auction specifically, we raised over $4,000, I believe. And then in total, it was well over ten. dollars um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, the, the Aoki cards that I auctioned off, that was fun too. So, yeah, there's just been a lot of giving, and it's really great. And that 100%, the reason that, like, the first thought in my head was when I wanted to do that was lean heart, just like you said. So, like, I, I fully, like, for all this charitable stuff, 100% agree that lean heart started a, a ripple effect and it's been doing incredible. And I, and I hope it continues, right? Because we always see oh, every it will. year, not even just in like Pokemon, you always see it perk up around the holiday season, right? Everybody's yeah. more charitable. But I, mm -hmm. I, you know, I hope we see that that extension continue throughout, you know, next year and, and all throughout, mm -hmm. you know, growth, Wayne, whatever. I so, may or may not be really working cool. on another. So keep an eye out for that. There you go. And Ooh, then dumb the money inside fun. dumb money TV is doing the first edition booster box, all the charity. That that's like gonna be four hundred thousand dollars or whatever those packs oh. sell for at that time. Can you can you actually elaborate? No, I can't. I, um uh, then okay. well all we know, all we know is that they that box they bought, the first edition base set box for three hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. They plan on doing mm -hmm. a charity event with it. Um, okay. they mentioned in their, in those live videos, they did that 100% of that is going to charity. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. Cause that's what I was going to say. That was the last I had heard about yeah. it was that, you know, a hundred that they were, you know, eventually either going to open the packs or auction the packs or however they decided to do it, but right. that it would go to charity. And then I just haven't heard anything since. So I didn't know if maybe you had like something cropped up and I missed it. Yeah, but, they, they are. Uh, I, my assumption is that they're wanting to do a large event with it. Cause it is a very, it should be a big event with something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So I think they're just waiting for COVID to, uh, oh, okay. to calm yeah. down um, in order mm -hmm. to make that happen. Well, and then you could have people there and a film crew and everything like that, right. which you can't really have right now. Exactly. So. Exactly. Um, so, yeah. Well, that was a long news segment. That was great. Yeah, it sure, it sure was. <laughs> well, you know, because we, we also kind of dissected PWCC, <laughs> which actually will transition us into our bigger, broader topic of the day, which is modern versus vintage in terms of collecting price points investing you know understanding it why things are the way they are etc which means a lot of what we're going to continue to do over the next you know x amount of minutes is to still discuss pwcc yeah. this actually wasn't even our main topic for today this topic started when radar was streaming on twitch which you guys should go follow and watch him on twitch but was streaming on twitch and uh had a little um Epiphany. What, what would you call it? A little breakdown, maybe, <laughs> when he saw Burning Shadow Charizard <laughs> prices comparative to the prices of other cards <laughs> and did not like it. Whereas to me, it made sense. And so I even wrote in the chat, he's like, am I wrong here? And I said, yes, you are wrong here. And <laughs> well, then he's like, well, let's discuss it. So to, to be that's fair, how we got to the today. To be fair, the breakdown started with those playing cards, uh, those Beckett oh, playing yes. cards. Well, we'll discuss. Yeah. We'll discuss. Those. So, yes, so it just, so it just kind of. Playing cards and how we got here. Yeah. So I was doing my Twitch stream. I was reviewing the PWCC auctions. And I think that's what kind of set me off. I was looking at the auctions. You know, they do it in their chronological order. But we hit the... Uh, the playing cards, like the deck playing cards, like Ace of Spades with Charizard on it or whatever. There was Beckett tens of like Pikachu, Espeon, some other popular Pokemon at like a couple hundred dollars each. And it blew my mind because they were going for more than PSA 10 first edition base set cards. Um, and I was, I went straight to eBay and there were a couple, like there was a lot of 10 sealed decks for, 150 each or something like that well one mm -hmm. of the cards in there was selling for 300 dollars, and i know people with yeah. tons of those like it just blows my mind that something that dumb is going for so much money beautiful artwork beautiful artwork okay 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 well well let me ask you two questions here first of all okay okay 
everything's eye of the beholder, right? There are going to be some people out there that just value those things because they like them. They don't want to go through the difficulty of grading them, having to crack, try to get pristines, blah, 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 whatever, mm -hmm. right? So I'm not sure I'd call it dumb, right? Because everyone likes different things. Mm -hmm. But let me ask you this. So you saw those prices realized. Obviously felt a little uneasy about it. And then you went to eBay and saw the availability of the deck. So let me ask you this. No. Did you end up buying any of the decks? No. Did you FOMO into it? No. No. Okay. You seem very confident in that response. Like, you can't believe I'm asking you, but like... It's a dumb purchase. Know, if I saw these cards going for that much and there's that many cards in the deck and I could crack up in a sealed deck and... By the time that I would buy those, get them back, somebody who I know already has like 50 or 100 of those sealed decks are doing the same thing. So I'm not going to waste my time with it. I, so, sure, okay. I, I still... So okay, I look, there's, there's still opportunity in that transaction to make money, mm -hmm. but I don't want to put my time into that. So I want to tangent here, just off a, a, a quick little thing. This may be, this may end up being one of the Holy Grail snippets of one of our podcasts, <laughs> right? And, and I don't know because I haven't even asked yet, but, and it doesn't really have anything to do with today's topic, but those playing cards specifically, we saw the prices they went for. And it's because, you know, those playing cards obviously made by, you know, Nintendo, which was originally a playing card company, um, with, you know, conjunction with TPCI. Do you remember the Pikachu, Mario, Pikachu, Luigi crossover? Yeah. That happened, you know, 2016, I think it was. Yep. Well, they also released a deck of playing cards in that 52-card deck. Yeah, yeah. I don't think most people know this. So huh. back when those came out, everybody was buying the box that had the, the actual promo cards in it. But they had a whole merch line that released. There were, like, notebooks. There were playing cards. There were, like, you know, DS cloths and all kinds of stuff. Because I bought a lot of that merch. I actually still have five sealed playing card decks of the Mario, Luigi, Pikachu trading cards. And I have some of them up on eBay, which means I, before we post this podcast, I probably need to take them down. But I've sold one of those sealed for like 175 bucks, And so those decks cost around the same amount that the other decks cost. And if those playing cards are going for that much, what would this crossover release go? Because apparently you can grade them. To the I didn't realize you could grade the cards, but now <clears throat> I'm going to bust them out and grade them because you can do it and I'll be the first to mark it. Mm -hmm. But like, you don't see them that often. Like, there are like none of those listed on eBay. And I'm sure some would get pulled out of the woodwork but I mean, back in the day, I think they were like 15 bucks yeah. at Pokemon Center. And so my, my question to you is, do you think that that price is derived in the artwork, in the release, the age, or just because nobody else did it? All of all the above. I think okay. there is no knowledge or not enough knowledge about the release for the people that are probably buying it. Um, the artwork is fantastic of the Pokemon on the cards. Um, and of course the grade, the pristine 10, it's a hard grade to get in any shape or form. Um, mm -hmm. but to me, it's just so far this, this, <laughs> this is a broad statement here, but the market has gone, I think it's just gotten too large to a point where people are buying these things that no one has ever wanted. And those are items that will be the first to go if anything bad happens here in the market. So it, I just, it's just such a stretch. It's such a stretch. That's why I hate it. You think it. it's one of those things almost that like people are just kind of throwing everything at the wall, you know, similar yeah. to like how last night we saw some graded cards that I think in most years that were not 2020, we would not have seen graded. For example, there was a CGC nine, Crystal Guardians Reverse Hollow Wismer that sold for forty four dollars, right? And I'm don't laugh, don't laugh. No. There, there's a Wismer fan out there right now that's mad. They're downvoting our video because I, of that. I I like those EX Reverse Hollows. Same. I with the set symbol. I think those are some of the best cards in all of Pokemon. I don't disagree. Actually, I like them a lot too. But my my point being is, if this was 2016, even which was another big boom year. I don't think that card ever gets graded, mm -hmm. you know? And so do you kind of lump them in with that, that we're kind of, you know, because we've also seen a bunch of, um, you know, Topps cards had already started to rise a little before this year, but we've really seen Topps cards explode. We've really seen some of those, you know, some of the 
uh I don't want to say Meji cards because some of those were popular before, but we've seen some of these like really obscure released Pokemon branded items really take off this year that before Top Sun, card ass. Really yeah. Um, and do you think it's kind of in that vein? Or do you think this is maybe just a market that nobody had really thought of it and there as is an actual demand? I'm, I'm trying to think of, you know, you talk about these reverse holo EX sets and it, to me, it makes sense that we eventually graded them because it's, part of the same card game that we enjoyed and love and are collecting mm -hmm. this deck of cards is so far removed in my opinion it, it doesn't make sense what's after that what drags people in to what, what are you grading after that i don't know like top sun Pokemon mighty beans <laughs> top sun makes <laughs> sense <the> <laughs> Mighty Beans, Tech Dex. Action figure authority. They'll grade them. Go get them right now. Right. You heard it here. So, like, to me, Mighty Beans are the next to, to me, those playing cards are the end, and I don't want to be in that position yeah. at any at any point in any industry. Um, mm -hmm. Like, Top Sun makes sense. They are perceived to be the very first Pokemon cards ever, knowing that mm -hmm. they're not, in my opinion, and from what we've gathered. Um, yeah. The card ass 96, which probably are the first Pokemon cards released. Full Ken mm -hmm. Sugimori artwork set. Very unique. There's some like kind of prototype looking artwork of Pokemon. Those make mm -hmm. sense to me. And okay. that is just such a stretch. The, oh, wait. The, wait, the, 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 Medjai, right the Medjai doesn't make sense to okay, me either. Okay, but you just said what you just said, though. Almost like prototype artwork there, but it's artwork right mm -hmm. that like because those cards are also not pokemon the trading card game with attacks and energy symbols and all of that right right it's, it's artwork it's characters people love mm -hmm. i mean playing cards aren't really that different from that That's you know true. this is this is kind of where i disagree with you like i get what you're saying about like we're looking for the next thing to capitalize on like you know the community right we've kind of went through the cycles we went through the you know based in neo etc ex era gold stars have kind of been hit People probably aren't ready to take the jump to Diamond and Pearl, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, Black and White, etc. on and on. And some of that stuff has even ran. So now it's like, what fringe stuff can I go after? I get that mentality. But if we're going to give credence to some of these earlier things just because they are vintage and older, well, this is also vintage and older and is just artwork and is not part of the main game. Like, is mm -hmm. it not possible that maybe all of those sold to different buyers that, mm. you know, that one person just liked Lugia or that one person just liked Espeon? And so they they wanted to buy those ones specifically to put in their Espeon collection or their Lugia collection. Just buy you know, the Lugia I, Game Boy promo. It's the same art. It's better. <laughs> yeah, it's also <laughs> very, very expensive. I guess that one was expensive too. So I don't know. Like, to me, it's tough because, you know, I see a lot of people that collect <clears throat> Pokemon cards, like, you know, hardcore, tens of thousands of dollars. But then they see somebody go out and spend two grand on a Pokemon Silver video game sealed, you know, graded by WADA, and it just blows their mind. Well, why would anyone? You can't even play it. Well, it's like once your cards graded in a PSA case, you can't play it either. Like, <laughs> you know, and to me, but it's about the art. It's about the nostalgia, the, the emotion that it evokes. And I'm not saying that, you know, all those people that went out and bought those playing cards were evoking some poker nostalgia from playing <laughs> with their, you know, heart gold souls or their their gold and silver playing cards back in the day. But like. I don't know. I think that there is merit to like not just necessarily writing stuff like that off because I think it can breed the missing of opportunity, right? If I was just, yeah, I agree, Radar. I think that is crazy. All those people are big dummies that bought it and just <laughs> write it off. I would have never connected the dots to like, holy cow, the Pikachu Mario playing cards could also be insane. I think it's a nice, cheaper option and it went overpriced. Okay. I don't think well, that's there's... fair. Yeah, there shouldn't... There, there, there's... I think there's a market for anything Pokemon. I mean, obviously mm -hmm. we love we love this stuff. They're the biggest media franchise ever. So anything with a Pokemon sticker on it will sell. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just shocked by the prices specifically. Okay, so that, so you think it's fine that people are interested in them, but that yeah. they're probably either getting caught up in the bidding or FOMOing into it or yeah. something comparative to other things they could have bought on the market yeah. i think that's fair yeah, it, i also yeah. agree i thought the prices seemed kind of absurd that's why i connected the dots it's like my god dude if these which are, i still can find tons of lots of like 10 decks at a time mm -hmm. are going for this 
what are my Pikachu Mario cards worth once I go grade them straight out of the box, you know, that are, aren't, you know, mm -hmm. 20 years old or whatever, but that there's far less of them right now and also have cross comparison with Nintendo and the two most iconic, probably video game characters of all time in Mario and Luigi. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so I thought that one was interesting. That was kind of what brought up, you know, the, the whole topic of the, where people are parking their money right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was not the one I think that really rocked your boat. What no. was the uh, one that bothered you the most? <laughs> so this is a conversation I've been having since I had one of my friends on my podcast, uh, Gotta Catch Them All. You know, when EV tens were going for like a thousand bucks, there was just this simple formula of would you rather have twenty of these or one of those? Mm -hmm. And I saw the Burning Shadows Charizard PSA ten. It was at like two twenty three hundred. Do you know what it ended at? Uh, it ended at uh, right around three k. About three thousand dollars for a modern Pokemon card. Now, mm -hmm. to be fair, the first Chase Charizard since Gold Star, the first of like the Rainbow Rare, whatever. But there's a Rest ton of them. <laughs> there's so many of them. There's like 700 of yeah. them. There's a ton of product left. There's a ton of nines. Mm -hmm. But you're spending three grand on a modern Charizard when you could buy a PSA 8 first edition Charizard for like, what, 12000 15000 well, let's even compare just like a similar grade or a similar sure. cost, right? So you could go out and buy probably right now a PSA 1 first ed Charizard. And even though it's a terrible condition, you have the grail. You, yeah. you, you can say that you own that card. And, you know, I, I think that that's a valid comparison to make. And I think these are questions that we have to ask ourselves a lot in terms of, you know, when we're collecting, where we're parking our money is, you know, do I want this thing that's maybe not as old or as rare but, you know, is a hard to obtain popular card versus this older thing, et cetera, et cetera. So to give you some context, the reason the Burning Shadows Charizard bothered me, right? And I've actually sold a few at 3,500 and 4,000. So that's even a slight retrace from that one. Um, the reason I have a bunch of them is when Burning Shadows came out, I had pull, a pull rate that I don't think I will ever be able to beat. I opened... 60 boxes and pulled 10 of them. I sent all 10 to PSA and all 10 got 10s. Um, that, all 6 you know, got 10s. No, all 10 got 10s. Ten. Ten. I pulled 10 oh, of them. One on it. Wow. I, one I, per case. Yeah, I pulled 10 of them. I pulled 10 Hyper Zards and no Hyper Gardevoirs. So, like, I'm not sure the collation was also right. Maybe I just got, like, God cases. I don't know what happened. But, um, and all 10 of those got 10s. The problem was... The second wave that came out of Burning Shadow. So essentially, when the distributor like takes your allocation, they get it in, you know, and they dole out to all their customers, and then whatever they have left, they sell out. And then when they're like, "Oh, hey, Pokemon, we're out. We need more." So then Pokemon, you know, because the distribution model worked then a little differently than it does now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they would send them more. Well, when the second wave of Burning Shadows came out, there was a major issue with it. The issue was similar to what happened with X Y Evolutions print runs, where the top would be kind of jagged, like the blade was almost dull when it cut. Yeah. And so pretty much every Burning Shadows Charizard that was not in the first wave was not getting a 10 ever. Most of them defaulted. PSA for a while gave a bunch of them nines and eventually started defaulting them to sevens, even though they were the exact same. I think they just changed how they treated it. Mm -hmm. But the reality is like tens for the longest time, the pop was capped around like 150. And then it, they, you know, every once in a while you'd have like one or two kind of creep into that. And so it kind of gained the notoriety that like this card is impossible to grade almost kind of like the Plasma Storm Charizard back in the day that were off-centered. Like, you could send 100 of those, and 100 are going to get nines. And every once in a while, one that's, like, maybe just a tad less off-center than the other ones, but it's still off-center, gets a 10. Hmm. And it was kind of like that. Like, people just open them up with the expectation, you're never getting a 10. And eventually that changed about a year and a half later when Burning Shadows got a reprint that was kind of, like, out of its cycle the print quality was better. Mm -hmm. And then more of those tents crept in the market, but it always kind of kept that stigma that it was hard to grade, which is kind of why it's stayed up there and why that price is so high, but the pop report is there. It is also the first, you know, hyper rare version of Charizard, mm -hmm. you know, so th there's a lot of like variables that we can say why that card is where it is. Um, but we're not here to debate 
whether that Charizard's price is justified. We're here to debate putting your money in something more modern like that. And you don't, you know, you don't even have to use that. We we can take the Staff 10 Charizard. I sold one for 7,500 this year. There was one in PWCC last night that went for 8,600 in a 10. Um, and this is the Evolution Staff, not the Team Up or the, the current one, the mm -hmm. Vivid Voltage. But, you know, that's another Charizard that is a modern Charizard that, you know, went for multi-thousand dollars. Let's take that 10, 8,600 last night. You could actually just go out and buy a PSA 6 First Ed Charizard. Mm -hmm. I mean, so uh, the interesting about that one, though, is that it was a limited print run. And although right. those staff stamps are pretty easily uh, recreatable from what we've seen, um, I mean, we know that there was a thousand. I think that was the number thrown around. A thousand of those staff evolution Charizards were It, were it was. That was actually, I, would, I was the one that did that video back in 2016 really? where I sat down with my roommate and we broke down the the estimated amount of pre-releases and if it was an even 25 percent distribution how many there should have been and the number was kind of right around that thousand and, now you know that's always going to fluctuate etc but yeah right and on top of that at, when they did when they distributed those 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 staff pre-releases they sent stores only one of the cards there, there was the, the machamp mewtwo Gyarados, charizard Correct. stores only got like five six seven or however many of one of the cards of one of them which is not how it usually works by right. the way that was an an error that is that is what happened so you were either a charizard store you were a machamp store or you were a you know a whatever store and, and it's and, mutual Garris. yeah um, and then on top of that like stacking things up here they were put without sleeves in a box a lot of them of the came energy. on top of the energy a lot of them got slipped in but you know between cards and bent damaged all sorts of things happened with those that one's okay. That one makes sense to me. Although yeah, it is okay. A so, so you're okay with that one. Okay. Yeah. So because of release. All right. Then then here I've got one for you. Hidden Fates Black Label Charizard. Well, what's that at? 10K now? when it came out, fell off a cliff. I mean, now it's like 5K. It's up to 5K. So so to me, I look at that and like one of my most recent purchases was a Master Scroll. I paid ten thousand okay. dollars for it. It graded mm -hmm. a Beckett nine. Mm -hmm. Probably I don't know, worth 20,000 range or so. Um, I'm just throwing that number out there because the last PWCC auctions were a little weird with their, those cards were not correctly graded or the 10 wasn't. Um, would I rather have two black label, label uh, hidden face Charizards or one Master Scroll? I, I think anybody and everybody would pick Master Scroll over and over and over and over again. Okay. Maybe. I think a lot of people would. I think a lot of people that have been super ingrained in the community, you know, that know about all these trophy cards, et cetera, et cetera, yes, right? But there are a ton of people that Hidden Fates is their grail. You know, maybe they entered right before it. Maybe they entered right when it came out. And that's the card they wanted to chase. Mm -hmm. Maybe their friends told them about it or, you know, it's a parent and their kid's getting into the game and, you know, the kid really wants to get it and they pulled one together, whatever. You know, whatever that story is. But, like, I could very well see a world where people are speculating on those cards and those price points because there is a massive wave of nostalgia that's going to come back to this era. You mm -hmm. know, if if we assume that Pokemon's cyclical, right? So you had your big spike in 2009, retraced throughout, like, the EX, Diamond, and Pearl era. People started to kind of get back in HDSS, and then we really saw it ramp up, you know, black and white x y and now sun and moon where you know catastrophic and now look at us in sword and shield we're to the moon if we assume that there will then be some kind of a retrace time will go by and then eventually those people will have kids and get nostalgic about it and come back well what are they going to get nostalgic about it's mm -hmm. probably not going to be a master scroll it's probably going to be about that time that they were ripping up in hidden fates packs every day and watching lean hard on youtube and you know scouting out their walmart for when the supply truck was going to roll in and that's what they're going to get nostalgic about you know because that's what drives a lot of this and we've even seen this pr like price memory almost with cards you know when we watched this year everything started to catapult we watched the big three charizard venusaur and blastoise for first base rocket right mm -hmm. but then we started to see cards other charizards in like you know team rocket or blaine's charizard from gym challenge start to outpace a lot of the other first base foils and everyone's like well this is the original why would it outpace well, because people are more nostalgic about Charizard and like Charizard better mm -hmm. 
you know, or some of these other sets or other cards than what they are, you know, X, Y, and Z card from base set. It's the same reason that we're seeing Lugia from Neo Genesis spike up now. People really like the gold and silver generation. People like New Lugia. It's the poster child. If you got into Pokemon a little late, maybe you caught the second movie was your first movie instead of the first one, right? So Neo Genesis, which led that era, you know, or Lugia, which led that era from Neo Genesis, you know, people have nostalgia for that card, wanting to chase that card. I, re I have a story about Neo Genesis Lugia, and I kind of fell out during that era, but I had the Japanese one mm. that I pulled from a pack, and that to me was cool. I was like the only kid on the playground with a, a Gen 2 card, and let alone the, the biggest one, you know? <laughs> and like, so to me, that price makes sense. But you yeah. see other people, they're like, 22 k you could go out and buy a you know a master scroll you can go buy three master scroll you know mm -hmm. things like that and so while i understand exactly where you're coming from i i think it all comes down to perspective i think it's different people's perspectives and kind of what calls out to them i agree i would not pay five thousand dollars for a hidden fates charizard I also really don't value black labels, but I, you know, hmm. regardless, I don't even know that I agree that it's $500 when I can go buy a PSA 7 first dead Raichu from base set for 350 yeah. You know, I would much rather the Raichu. That to me makes sense. But I can understand, you know, why a consumer would have more attachment to one of those cards or want one of those cards. And it comes down to, it, to simple demand. It's... Mm -hmm just standard economics 101 supply and demand like you said yeah charizard is the most demanded card so you have a much larger buyer pool more people are going at it that drives the prices and mm -hmm. yeah it's I, I, trophy cards will always have an awareness problem always mm -hmm. uh no matter yeah. no matter what happens i think it, it's always going to be just minuscule compared to what else you know, else is going on in the whole market charizard from a whole so yeah it's it's just frustrating when you have having this much knowledge that we do and like obsession over pokemon is mm -hmm. is really a, a blessing and a curse because things like this just frustrate me um it's so because you want to wave them down you want to be like hey no 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 you buying that over there you you want to be buying this thing and like right. i get it they don't care about this thing. Right. They don't even know that this thing exists. They I have care no, about this thing. I have zero attachment to my scroll. There's no nostalgic feeling towards that thing at all. Maybe in 10 years, I'll look back and think like, oh, remember that time when we used to talk about the scroll? That was fun. But yeah. But I definitely think the time of, guys, remember when Hidden Fates came out and the whole Pokemon world blew up and you couldn't get any? That would be a much more nostalgic story mm -hmm. than talking about the time we scrolls off for the boys became a thing you know like, <laughs> well, but like the i i love this topic though because we're seeing this topic emerge and people start to question these things not just in in you know our industry right like i made a video not that long ago on a trade that was done in the video game world mm -hmm. that was a pretty historic trade between a pokemon red 9.8 a plus plus which is you know pretty much the peak that would be like getting a pristine 10 on bgs and just missing the black label and for a nintendo world championship cart that was like a 5.0 right and nwc cart has a ton of history it's like the equivalent of your trophy card for video games and a lot of people were like nwc no brainer this is absolutely no contest this thing has so much history this is like a mass-produced pokemon game like lol at that guy and in that video i literally said i actually think long term the guy that got red wins because there's so much nostalgia for red there's so much nostalgia on that and while the nwc is super cool and has a ton of history for me it's my grail in video games mm -hmm. i still voted with red because emotion and nostalgia wins that at all day every day and and the reality is most people collecting video games don't even know about the nwc or the history behind it right and in that video i even made the call it, it's the same reason i think someday first dead charizard base 10 could outpace the illustrator and then we as we've watched tens rocket this year you know eventually we did get that 350k sale and it did for a while. Mm -hmm. Now we've seen the 900k trade that has come since, and that's always going to be one of those things that Illustrator will probably always just have less movement than what the 10 Charizard will. And so when it does happen, it will pass, right? Didn't you vote and for the Illustrator being the better part of the deal? Of the of the trade that yeah. the guy made? Yeah. No, I think the Pika Trophy guy won hands down. 
the guy that the got, guy that got the, the 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 illustrations and the Charizard. Yeah, oh, I think he, oh, okay. Yeah, I think he won. Okay. Well, okay. I thought Let I me... thought originally you said that the the guy who got the illustrator won. Well, I like the Pika trophies the best. That's, I'm talking okay. in terms of like dollar value. Yes, it's probably the illustrator. Okay. Um, merely because I don't think but the illustrator future price outlook. wise. Even. Okay. Future outlook. Because that's what you're discussing with the red version. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. The, and Future the outlook. I think that there is a world where, and this is a tough one to call. It it's not as black and white to me as what the video games were. The video game one's super easy because like mm -hmm. the illustrator is probably more well known in the Pokemon world than what the NWC is in the video game world. Huh. Um, that being said, I do think that there is a world where the Charizard guy could win that trade. Okay, like long term. Well, you just said that um, you, you thought at one point the Charizard could outpace the illustrator. And it did for a while. Yeah. I mean, up up for a while, we had a three hundred seventy thousand dollar illustrator that was not selling on Yahoo Japan, and yet we had three hundred fifty k sales of. Well, that's a ten Argo. versus a non graded card. It's a little different. All right. Well, when you want to pull me up a ten <laughs> illustrator on the market, we will talk. <laughs> My point is that, like, the reality is though, it comes down to eye of the beholder. This the, that that trade that we talked about in our first podcast that was a great example of someone you know that. They did value a lot of, you know, what would be more modern Charizards and more modern things over the Illustrator. Mm -hmm. You know, they took that trade. Now, whether that's because they just want to sell them and cash out or they, you know, whatever the motives are, you know, they took that option. Mm -hmm. And and I think that's why as a whole, you know, if we're going to, you know, just kind of revert back to that podcast, that's why that was so surprising that that even happened in the first place. Because who's willing to give up an Illustrator for anything like that, right? It would be like kind of what we're talking about here with a hidden fates charizard or a burning shadows charizard you know even if you had like five of those who would trade those into you know a play promo espion or a master scroll or a trophy kang you know if it's equal value who like who takes that trade and you know a lot of people i think are just going to default to the answer of well the guy that wants to cash out you know you just put all the charizards on the market and sell them I think that's kind of a cop out. I think that that's like assuming that every person that ever just trades a card like that wants to then sell it because I think you would just sell the card, right? right. That's what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what you, well, yeah, that's fair. But like, you know, my point is, I I think the the summary, the whole of kind of all of it is this stuff is absolutely eye of the beholder. Whether it's a playing card that you know maybe we don't agree on the price point, maybe somebody else does. Maybe they have a reason or a merit that they want it. You know, whether it's a Burning Shadows Charizard versus a first edition Jungle Hollow or something like that. It really just comes down to where you want to put your money, what you want in your collection, and what you're comfortable with. And at the end of the day, the market will dictate it long term. Mm -hmm. I agree that some of this modern stuff and the price points that it's seeing, especially comparative to some of this vintage stuff, is absolutely irrational. Mm -hmm. But I also think that people just automatically write it off. All of it is irrational because that vintage stuff exists and the reality is sometimes people just buy that stuff because they don't care about the vintage stuff. collectors I mean, how many people... collectors in it in their definition are irrational people <laughs> i mean you're not wrong so, we are pretty much ordered yeah so, we, like, we buy things that have no use in our intrinsic life value. yeah we we give them the intrinsic value yeah right mm -hmm. you know it's it, it, it like let's take a real big leap here bitcoin does not really do anything. It, people created the like store of value narrative and and people like well, that narrative. Mm. You know, it's a store of value. I mean, right now you cannot do anything with your Bitcoin unless you go out and get a Visa card and spend it the same way you'd spend the US dollar. You can't, well, like, it, it has a legal value. There's people using it for other reasons. That's why it has, I think, the value it has. Okay. Today. Okay. But, but I guess Pokemon could be the same. In the blockchain essence of the world. They, like, I'll, <laughs> what I'm saying is the, the value that's been applied to it has been human applied, right? It, yeah. it, it, it has been like, there there is no like function, right? We can take wind and make wind power. We can take coal and burn it and make electricity. Like there's nothing we do with Bitcoin other than like give it value. The same way with Pokemon cards. Dollar they bills, value, gold, silver. But oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's all things that we have given intrinsic value to. Yeah. And, you know, so to us, Pokemon cards are as good as gold. Mm -hmm. They're as good as money because we've applied that intrinsic value and we know that there's enough other people out there that have as well. It's better. There's, it's better than. <laughs> better. You heard it here first. That that should have been on your books and bleps for next time. The Pokemon <laughs> cards are better than, than gold. gold. Well, hey. 
going into next year with the way the U.S. dollar is inflating, they may actually be better than, than the dollar. But like that, that's kind of the whole of it. And I think even on like a micro level, we can break that down to individual cards. Mm -hmm. It kind of just applies to what intrinsic value you put with each of those cards. And yeah. so for me, it makes sense. I lean towards modern more. Actually, I grew up in the Watsi era. I played then. But I've lived it. I've lived that stuff. I like yeah. experiencing new things. So like hyper rare, secret rare. I love that stuff. I am. Well, it's a what lot you, of you guys out there. Right? It's what Go you. Ahead. It's Go what ahead. you sustain your business on, right? Is modern. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I think a lot of people out there are getting this perception that I am a I am the more bearish of the two of us, which is probably true. But maybe that I am just more of a bearish individual in general, and that's actually not the case. You'll definitely see once we hit the downtrend that I become more bullish once like we get mm -hmm. to that point. But the point being is that there is one thing that I have been bullish on throughout all of this throughout ever mm -hmm. is hyper rares Yeah, because hyper rares are not only the highest rarity, but you know, a lot of the, the, the purest, the Watsy purists, as I like to call them, they, you know, they hate hyper rares. They hate the way they look, but the sales data speaks otherwise that yeah. there is clearly a collective of people out there that absolutely love this stuff. It's an incredible and chase. I mean, it's an incredible chase, yeah. especially now with how many they put in sets. So it, yeah, that makes sense to me. I mean, mm -hmm. it's, uh, I mean, look at, look at Chonkachu. It literally hyper Chonkachu sold a set because that set's good. Mm -hmm. There's other good cards in it, but competitive play is not going on. And I mean, Chonkachu still held like 250 bucks and it somehow kept vivid voltage boxes, even with another wave MSRP, which is mind boggling to me. I think that just speaks to, you know, the demand for modern. Yeah. And, you know, and, and the hope is that as people get more ingrained into the hobby and more knowledgeable, they kind of do a little bit of everything, yeah. right? You know, and, and can enjoy everything. But I, I want to wrap up with, at the end of the day, no matter what you're into, whether it's vintage, whether it's modern, whether it's trophy cards or common cards, as long as you're doing what you enjoy, that's what matters. You know, investing, you can get into the nuances of it. Flipping, you can get into the nuances, all the variables, where people should or shouldn't be parking their money. But at the end of the day, people are going to park their money wherever they want to do it at. Mm -hmm. And all you do, not you specifically, but people out there, by applying your preconceived notions of where you think people should be parking their money, is all you do is cost yourself opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, for the longest time, I was like, I don't know why anyone would buy Japanese cards when you could buy English cards, right? You can't even read them. All I did was cost myself opportunity because the reality is the market does not care whether I think people should or should not buy Japanese cards. And I've <laughs> changed on that now. I actually like them a lot. Yeah. But like, you know, the market does not care what I think about that. Mm -hmm. Right. The market does not care that like trophy cards are not my grails for the hobby. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're going to do what they do. And so whether you think those things or not, don't let them cloud your judgment on the way everything is going to play out because the reality is people are just going to do what they like. Right. So. And, and I mean, the thing is like me and you, we have like completely different businesses as similar as it might seem <laughs> that we're talking about Pokemon. We have completely yeah. different businesses uh, on what we do. Like, yeah, I, like, yeah. you're, you're, you're wheeling and dealing in modern. Um, well, you do all, pretty much all of it, but um, <laughs> I'm, but modern I'm, is a, a big focus. A bit, yeah. yeah and, and my focus is a lot on like consulting and, and the vintage side of things. So mm -hmm. like I'm, Telling again back to the bit blip and blep of of the very first one of that trophy cards are a bait. The people that I'm dealing with on a normal basis have a net worth far greater than I will ever achieve in multiple lifetimes. So mm -hmm. that's where it makes sense for them to put money. So yeah, it's yeah. it's it's all in again. It's all based on the individual, and uh, mm -hmm. I think we can summarize this as the collectors are just simply irrational people. Um, <laughs> it's the title. The title? It's collectors the title. are irrational in the Pokemon hobby. I wrote it down. It's the title of my video for this one. Um, is it really? Yeah. Dang, that was what I was going to use in my title. <laughs> <laughs> we could use the same thing. Um, we'll see who can make our... Okay. Okay, everyone. When this video goes up, go to both of our channels, look up the video, and vote in the comment section whose title you think is better clickbait. Dry that's what i want to know we want you guys to drive us apart by telling us who you like better yeah. um yeah <laughs> but on the other channel so like yeah. you like my title better go to his comment section and tell him if you like his title better come to my comment section and tell me that way whoever's the loser still feels good because they got comments <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> then we're both winners. I like but that. But seriously, let us know in the comment section. And if you think you can come up with a better one, maybe we'll read it on the next one. If you're, But it has to be 60 characters or less because the YouTube algorithm says if your characters <laughs> are more than 60, you're not gonna you're not going to rank. So 60 characters or less if you can come up with better clickbait than Radar or I. Yeah. I also won't read anything longer than that. Um, so talking about blips <laughs> yeah. and bleps, let's let's yeah. let's touch base on uh, our last most popular. It was a blip this time. Uh, it was a blip, the first blip, the first blip that has made it. Um, we've my, only done two of these. We've only done two of these. <laughs> <laughs> I feel special now. Um, it was uh, a, regarding my my blip of the Pokemon Snap cards and and correct. There was and, a lot of interest in the. Uh, Kind of what you thought about you know pokemon snap competition you know you'd kind of mention you know if, if people don't know out there because this is kind of again one of those more maybe nuanced things that people don't even realize exist that are kind of up there with trophy cards is pokemon back when snap came out had a competition in japan to submit your in-game screenshots essentially of you know the the, the pictures that you took and if you won you could get them put on a card and you would get i think it was 20 copies 20 copies. of that card 20 copies and they were 10 winners 10 different ones um and there's various ones gyarados magic carp articuno coughing those are the ones i think off the top of my head squirrel bulbasaur charmander pikachu um, polywag chancy yeah there we go i think we just hit them all um so anyway <laughs> there if, if you caught all of that articuno. but articuno yeah so those were <laughs> the the winners and they gave those out that was a huge deal those cards go for tens of thousands of dollars today some of them have never even surfaced magic carp and apparently pikachu. so you know Pikachu, that would be a big thing if they did something like that again. So can you elaborate kind of your thoughts on why maybe you think they could do it or want them to do it, what you think it would look like, etc.? Yeah, absolutely. Now, it's it's going to look nothing like that past competition, uh, at least from the distribution standpoint of giving the winner 20 copies because Pokemon is very well aware of the secondary market and what is happening, and they would never do anything uh, like that because it would cause just a crazy commotion within the market and uh it, that's not what they're aiming to do they don't like they don't like that um okay. they, back then there really wasn't that market right and, right? This, and like, this was just japan like too it. and japan's a completely different market where they are very honorable and and they like to keep things they're very sentimental so you don't see mm -hmm. too many japanese sellers selling these things that's why trophy cards are so hard to attain because they don't want to sell them um mm -hmm. But yeah, I, you know this is complete speculation. I don't know anything. I don't know anybody at Pokemon about Pokemon Snap. But uh, it, this is really just like a big hopeful for me that they will do a similar competition for the Pokemon Snap Two that's coming out. Who knows when in twenty twenty one? Hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I've always had this idea that they should tie in a Pokemon Snap with Pokemon Go because it's using your phone it's available it's a thing like, i love pokemon snap it was one of the most nostalgic things for me as a kid uh, i mean you saw my reaction to super smash melee the amount of hours mm -hmm. i put on the snap and like pokemon stadium 2 the mini games with my brothers and sister like that was some of the best memories um mm -hmm. so video games in that aspect just have a much closer tie to my heart in pokemon mm -hmm. than other things um so with the advances in technology and the scoring system that they had set up with the original Snap, I'm sure they could just like greatly advance that, make a much more in-depth scoring system, and create a worldwide competition for Pokemon Snap on the Nintendo Switch, where they. Right. And I, I I was thinking about this yesterday because I knew we were going to talk about it, and I know they did like specific releases in different regions of the world for Pokemon Snap. So if they if they set special requirements for different regions without you know throughout the entire world of which pokemon to go after or which level they were on to send in their best pictures and you compete against everybody in that region or that world or whatever however they set it up in that way and then give out promotional cards to the winners um but also uh, i don't know if they I, I, I don't think that'll happen i wish they would do that i wish they would give yeah. the winners promotional cards like they did but they won't uh, but at least, a, at least release it as a, a Pokemon Center promo, something available. Promo to, or something. To and everybody. I agree. I don't think they'll do that. And the reason being is if we look back, 
they did the art academy competition on the the 3ds where you you know you drew your pokemon and they had tons of winners each one got a hundred cards uh tang growth was done by gosha you know mm -hmm. i know him um in real life you know things like that right like those kind of things and you know he sold some of his mm -hmm. right he's still grading some he traded some to maybe some of the other winners to get their arts and that was kind of maybe i think the the idea like the, to trade them around maybe release them out but like like you said they're very aware of the secondary market and they recognized that like while that was a really fun thing to do most people did not get to enjoy in it mm -hmm. because they never got to obtain those cards. They never got to like be a part of it. So instead it became like this grail thing where now these cards are going for, you know, at first they were only a couple hundred bucks, 500 bucks, but now they're thousands of dollars. And like you said, the Japanese generally on their side are more sentimental. A lot of those have never even come out other than like extra copies that were maybe employee copies or whatever. A lot of those Japanese ones have not even come out. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to where yeah, I, I remember the day that the Mew first hit ebay and people freaked out that you know the mew popped up and like there, there's a couple others that we you know still haven't seen and i don't think they want to create a situation like that again especially surrounding what would obviously be one of their biggest releases of the year and we've seen that trend right they've trended away from that they've done two other illustration contests the one where gardevoir won and the one where charizard won and instead they did them both as pokemon center buy a pack promos where if you buy x amount of packs or x amount of dollars you got one of these promos in fact charizard right now i think isn't it like 143 s-p or something mm -hmm. like that where like everyone's freaking out about it and buying a ton of them i sent 100 of them off to be graded like that is an example of where they recognized people get way more into this and like it a lot more and they can actually be a part of it even if, even if they don't win mm -hmm. and so i i feel like if they did that now it would be more something like that. They would either pick maybe winners and put them in like a pack, maybe like the creator pack, the WB creator pack, mm. where all the illustrators, like back then they made a pack of all the winners. They could do something like that and then give it away with like a buy a pack promotion or something like that. Um, or like the Pikachu World promos, probably... like a binder set. That would be cool. That would be cool as well. Yeah. Your distribution may be hard on that, but yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and... And I could definitely see them doing something like that, but I think I think that they've recognized that doing the more like exclusive model maybe doesn't work. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they just decided to do it differently for these ones and they'll go back to that. But yeah. I think as a whole, for the average person, maybe, you know, for me, I'm not artistic. I would never win one of those things in my life, even with just taking photos in a video game. I just don't have the eye for it. <laughs> and so for me, it's fun to just get to enjoy it by you know Being a part getting a card that somebody else did mm. and i my hope is that they recognize that too and that's why they made that transition the other one big thing i wanted to know is the reason i don't think it really could work like it did back then is part of like you know snap being so big was that you know at least here in america we had like the snap stations like mm. in blockbuster you know the kiosks where you could go in and you could take your your memory card or whatever and and put it in and you know put put your things on the card and then put them in and print off your pictures you could get to go home and take stickers of all your snap photos and put them all over your binders or wherever you want to put them and like you know it it was like a bigger thing like that and you know not only because this is probably going to release in 2021 and i suspect covid will still be a thing then so there's not going to be a lot of like in-person engagement or things like that but we're not going to have like those snap stations and kiosks so i actually think you're onto something where if they did it it would probably somehow integrate through the online of the switch oh yeah right because then yeah. it would also sell online memberships oh yeah so. no it's going to be it's going to be massive if even with like i i doubt they'll do a a exclusive competition for something like that but they have to put a leaderboard or something online to to engage the community that way because it will be massive, and I'm sure there will be DLCs you that come out. Will, I hope so because Nintendo like doesn't really do a lot of leaderboard esque stuff. Have you ever noticed that Mario like, I know Tennis Splatoon had some the, stuff. the tennis stuff they did that was huge when it first came. Yeah, out. they have kind of changed. Mario Maker Two had all the online integration with mm -hmm. levels and and speed times and everything. I mean, I would love to see it. I just I'm a huge Nintendo fanboy. And over the years, there's been so many instances like this where we're like, oh, it'd be so cool if they did this thing and that thing. Well, look, and, at, look at Melee. And then they never did any of them. They, they 
they like in they just consciously murdered melee. Ludwig went to this do- could be a podcast topic as yeah. a whole. You can already tell. Look at him. Look at him. He's like leaning forward in his chair, his <laughs> mic practically in his mouth. Melee. <laughs> Super Smash Melee is the he's greatest. Game. The mouth, he has to pull away. But yeah. All right, yeah. We won't dive into this, but because it's I'm too it's too much. But they they destroyed they they purposely destroyed melee, like because it became a competitive game. And yeah. Um I, I just can't. because it deters them from selling their new game, right? If everyone just keeps playing their old game, why would anyone buy the new game unless they made Melee Two? But from my understanding, not to divert too much, but from my understanding, I don't think they can really make wave dashing like it used to be in Melee. They probably lost that right? it. Well, whatever they said, it was a beautiful accident, right? It was yeah. w- whatever, whatever, uh, like uh, uh, back end programming they had, just the physics of it made it perfect for the way it was i don't yeah uh, can they just copy because my guess that? is even if they tried to port it over same code and just redo like upgraded hd models my guess is it still wouldn't work the same yeah because so, the model wouldn't interact the same way right so who knows um yeah so i think that's an instance where you know you're right and then you know obviously nintendo has not leaned towards the direction that their community you know wanted them to go and you know, a lot game, of this also comes it, down to the studios that develop the yeah. games, that kind of thing, the crunch that they're under. Um, I don't know how much you know about this, but the video game crunch world, especially um, with these Japanese studios, is pretty excessive in terms of how much crunch they put these employees under to get games done on a set time, etc. And I, you know, so a lot of times those kind of features that maybe they would want to put in, they just don't have the time because they're told you need to have this out on X date and they're already working seven days a week, you know, 14 hours a day. Yeah. And they just don't have time to build it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But yeah, that's a whole other I would discussion. Love to, I would love to see all of this for Snap, but I'm trying to keep my expectations like as low as possible. Mm-hmm. That way it comes out and unless it's just absolute crap, it will be a it'll feel like a great game and then anything above and beyond that will just be awesome right i've I mean, done that at the very least years, and it felt great at the very least it's going to be a 60 dollar game you're going to get your 60 dollars worth of enjoyment out in, in a week of time if it ends up not being that great um, unless so. they don't bring back the pester ball in which case hashtag boycott pokemon snap too that's <laughs> the, that's the rule if there's no pester ball and who is the guy? Just don't in make it too cart? complicated. I don't want it to be too complicated. Yeah, that's my other fear. I don't want a bunch of. Don't add like twenty pokeballs. Don't. Or like a million achievements, yeah. or like I don't. I wouldn't even mind achievements, right? But if they do it like, like almost like Skyrim, where you have like quests and but achievements please, and side quests, please or... keep as many hidden secrets as possible for us to discover. Yes. Because I actually really enjoyed that. And that was back in the, the day of like guidebooks, yeah. right? Or you'd go to like cheat CC to find all the cheat codes and stuff. And so like back then you didn't like, there was nowhere that unless you were going to look it up in like one of your guidebooks, you didn't get told that stuff. So you just right. figured it out. You know, I remember spoilers finding like the pincer electric shadow, like you did the thing and the pincer popped up on the wall. And that was one of the six secret things mm-hmm. to, you know, unlock and like that kind of thing. I, if they just added in, a ton more pokemon i mean we have 830 some now oh, if they yeah. added in like more pokemon more maps that that's all i need you don't mm-hmm. even have to you don't even have to update the graphics i'll yeah. take them as they were <laughs> just, get, yeah, just give me the game where's the game we've been waiting on a game for like <laughs> eight months now that's what i want to know yeah pokemon snap 2 metroid prime 4 bring them where are they at <laughs> metroid prime i gotta get that for my game collection by the way rest in peace metroid it's never coming no <laughs> one's gonna ever have it in their game collection no it actually just quick side note for anyone out there that's even still listening all two of you there is a uh metroid prime got pulled from its original studio and is now back with retro who made the original three my guess is they did not want retro to do it because they also make the donkey kong games that way they could like have both in development at the same time and then they realized holy cow this is gonna be a crap shoot and everybody's been waiting for it for so long so they gave it back to Retro and have just kind of put Donkey Kong on pause. So hmm. I do think we'll get it eventually. My guess is Never. around E3 next time, next year, they'll trailer it or something, hopefully. Oh, cool. Yeah. cool. Yeah. 
anyways, we've uh, we've really tangented off that Pokemon Snap uh, <laughs> contest. But everyone, that is, I think that's a wrap. Are you are you good? Is that, I think that's that all. Pretty? Yeah, that's about you everything. I about? mean, if we keep talking, yeah. like we'll just keep on going and getting fired up about things. Yeah, so. we could we could tangent real hard. We like this is pretty much how our Discord conversations go. If you guys really enjoy this kind of a dialogue where we'll jump in and we'll really like a bunch of us will hardcore talk about a topic until you can tell one person gets sick of it and they'll just bring up something else. And then everybody just jumps on that bandwagon and we just <laughs> go for hours and hours. So if you enjoy that, if you, if you know, if you like working, listing cards, doing whatever and chatting with people in the background, come join us, join in discord in the link description below, right around that area where you leave your comment, hit the thumbs up button and the bell <laughs> and the subscribe button. But anyways, guys, Thank you so much. This will wrap up our episode of Collectible Conversations with your hosts, Squeaks and Radar over there. Thank you all so much for watching. Do you have any final thoughts for everyone? Um, stop buying playing deck cards. But thank you for watching. And uh... I did some great to create all my Mario Pikachu cards. Yeah. Um, or just, nice. yeah, you know, whatever you or want to do. Or just buy my Mario Pikachu yeah. cards and then, and then buy <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, no. All right, guys. Well, we will see you all next time. Take it easy.